Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are in the world. Welcome back. Today's question is, how unsafe are motorcycles really? Let's get into it. Before we start discussing this, I am a motorcycle guy through and through. So I'm probably gonna be more biased towards bikes being safer than they actually are. So let's look at some statistics. Some studies show slightly different numbers, but we'll mainly be referencing numbers reported in 2016 from the UK government records. In 2016, the UK government reported 16,785 road accidents that involve motorcycles. 319 or 1% of motorcyclists died from the crash. 5,553 or 33% were seriously injured. One study reported some of the most common causes for the accidents were riders going too fast around corners and hitting an oncoming car, riders misjudging how curved the road is, and drivers on the wrong side of the road coming around a bend and hitting riders head on. The same study found that 58% of the accidents happen on motorcycles that are between 50 and 125cc and that 37% of the riders were under 25 years old. Other causes for motorcycle accidents were bad weather conditions or poor road surfaces. Thirty percent of motorcycle accidents have happened on rural roads or otherwise known as country roads However, 66% of those accidents resulted in death of the rider. Total numbers mean that if you are a motorcycle rider, you are 38 times more likely to be killed in an accident than a car driver per every mile travelled. 2001 motorcycle riders were killed or seriously injured per 1 billion miles ridden, compared to 26 for car drivers. Now let's not take these numbers out of context. We can explain and draw some conclusions as to why these numbers are what they are. The first obvious pattern that can be made is inexperienced riders making up a large majority of the casualties in the stats. For example, riders that only have a provisional license or none at all. Riders who have had a full license but have not had it for a long time. And finally, riders that have returned to riding after some years. The study found that it was inexperienced riders that struggled the most in going through bends in the road due to either speed, poor road surfaces, or bad weather. The percentage numbers are relatively comparable between drivers and riders in terms of deaths and serious injuries. Car fatalities by the UK government records in 2016 found that there were 137,798 accidents of which 816 or 0.6% deaths occurred and 18,548 or 13.5% seriously injured. Unfortunately the government study does not give the figure of deaths as a result of inexperienced drivers. However, it does give us a percentage of the amount of accidents caused by them. 10% for reckless driving and 3% for nervous and inexperienced drivers. The figure that sticks out the most is that motorcycles made up about 1% of the total traffic on the roads in 2016, but they contributed around 18% of total motor related deaths whereas cars made up 82% of the traffic and 46% of deaths on UK roads for the same year. Clearly it's inexperienced drivers that are mainly benefiting from the added safety that cars give you, and inexperienced motorcyclists are at most risk. All right, that's enough numbers for you. Hopefully that gives you an idea of the situation. Bearing in mind that all this information was from traffic records from 2016, the death rates for both drivers and riders seems to be steadily going down year on year. Motorcycle deaths, interestingly, went down by 13% from 2015 and 10% on average between the years 2010 and 2014. My thoughts on this is you can really get caught up in how dangerous something is, but it shouldn't stop you from pursuing it if it's something that you want to try. The thing that a lot of people forget is that there are many variables that are not accounted for in these studies. Not all minor motorcycle accidents get reported meaning that the percentage of deaths per the number of accidents could be significantly different. And the likelihood of you dying in a crash could also be significantly lower than the studies suggest. 
I have personally been involved in four motorcycle accidents. Luckily, none were serious and they all happened within the first two years of riding. And they were also on either a 50cc or a 125cc motorcycle, which does seem to correlate with the stats found in the 2016 studies. And three of those minor accidents were my own fault, mainly because I didn't know how to handle that certain situation. I think there are a couple of factors playing large parts in the data. The first being the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is the effect where in the first year of learning something new, you think you know 95% of the craft, but actually you only know about 20% and you start to realize how much more there is to learn over the next two to three years. What I'm saying is inexperienced riders thinking they know how to ride harder, so they push themselves, but actually they end up pushing themselves outside of their own skill level and then ended up in a crash. The other factor is poor quality bikes. Now I'm not sure about other parts of the world, but in the UK there are loads of Chinese bikes on the market. I had two of them when I first started riding. They're attractive to younger riders because they're really cheap to buy and they look as good from the outside as their Chinese counterparts, but they're really not. I believe all four of the accidents I was a part of were partly caused by the rubbish parts of the Chinese bikes. I'm talking specifically about brakes, suspension, and tires. I think if I had a proper motorcycle from a Japanese brand, I would have been able to control the bike much better, found more grip, and not lock up the tires. I've had plenty of close calls over my career of riding, as most of you have but the way I've been able to control decent bikes is very clearly different to me when compared to the Chinese bikes I had in my early days. Things like ABS instead of drum brakes, thicker and better quality tires, stiffer and more predictable suspension, I think would have saved me in my early career if I had a Cowie, a Yami or a Zuki. Another thought I have about the numbers is I don't think scooter riders should be put in the same boat as motorcycles. As you don't need a motorcycle license to ride one, and they don't manoeuvre the same as motorcycles, and there's far more skill involved in riding a proper motorcycle with a clutch, gearing and larger wheels than the twist and go bicycle style scooters you find. I bet most of them are just car drivers that want to be able to filter or something. So they have the same attitude when they get on their scooter as they do when they get in a car, which of course gets them killed. I personally started on a 50cc scooter because that was the only option I had to me when I was 16. But as soon as I was able to get on a 125, I got a proper motorcycle with a clutch and everything. I wonder how many people have a scooter and a car, but don't have a motorcycle license. That would be interesting to know if the scooter riders were separate from the motorcycle stats. Another reason why I think you should take the stats with a glass of salt. In the end, yes, motorcycles can be dangerous, perhaps more than cars, if you're inexperienced and or stupid. Therefore, if you want to start riding, go ahead. Just don't be a moron, take corners slowly, take your time to practice and you'll be fine. I've linked the studies in the video description below so feel free to take a look and see what you make of the data. That'll do for this one guys. What do you think? What are the stats in your country? Do the numbers lie? Are my opinions of them wrong? Let me know in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe and all the usual stuff. Thanks for watching, stay mean, ride hard and I'll see you in the next video.